Yeah, so I'm here to show you our game Walmart's Warehouse, which is in Fantastic Arcade. I'm, I'm going to start by showing you this trailer. Here we go. Okay. There we Okay, um, so yeah, Wilmot's, thank you. Wilmot's Warehouse is a game for people who like to organize stuff. I'm not sure I'm one of those people <laughs> in my real life, but I sort of vicariously role play at being an organized person in a video game. Uh, okay, I'm just going to start playing it. Hang on. Whoa, I can't see the mouse pointer. Okay, so Wilmot's Warehouse uh, was made by me and Ricky Haggart, um, Rick Richards Hogg and Haggart, uh, and it has music and audio by, what's, what's funny, I'm just reading out what it says on the thing. <laughs> wow, you're, it's good, you're a good crowd, it's easy to get a laugh. Uh, <laughs> It, yeah, music and audio by Ellie Rainsbury, and uh, I'm going to start a new. It. I started a game just. I think we're, this game, this game is one minute and twenty four seconds in. Can I have the audio on it turned down a bit? Thank you very much. So yeah, it's a game about working in a warehouse. You're this character here, and this is you probably saw in the trailer. A lorry delivered some things, so. These things have been delivered by the lorry. A lorry? What's a lorry? <laughs> it's a truck. Okay, so I've picked up some castles. I'm going to put these castles next to these knights' helmets because it's some, maybe there's a medieval connection. Medieval things. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's pretty much this is the game. <laughs> uh, you pick things up and you you take them up here. Well, you take them wherever you like. Like, it's quite a big warehouse. You could take them, um... Whoa! Oh, update flash! Brilliant! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh... So, if I wanted, I could take things... ...over here. Like, it's quite a lot of space. But I'm gonna put them near here. There we go. And I could wait... I could wait 26 seconds for the next bit of the game, but instead I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to go like this. Oh no? Oh, it's asking me a... Yeah, I am happy. Okay, here's some people. What do they want? things called that are like um, like an American mountain that's flat on top. A mesa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey look, there's some humps. I've got humps. This guy wants two humps. There are camels in this game. Uh, that's it. So it's pretty easy at the start. And you spend, yeah. So I'm happy. I'm just going to press the thing. What's going on? New product lines arriving. Click on the boxes. Okay. Okay, that's a cheese knife. Don't know what that is. It's a star. A uh, boxing glove. If I want, I can have a look and see. See some stats. Oh, I'm get back to work. The fun zone. <laughs> it's like if... We kind of... 
realised the game's not much fun, so we made a bit <laughs> where <laughs> we made a bit where you can have fun. I'll, I'll, I'll next time we're there, I'll show you. Get ex get ready, get ready for the fun zone. It was good. It's coming up. Okay, there's more of these things. I should talk about the game. <laughs> I'll just play it a bit more. It's really hard to play a game and, and talk about it at the same time. Even even a game is where there's not much going on. It's a shame we don't have a partner present in the theater who I know. has an experienced player of this game. Yeah, no, it's okay. Okay, I can. Yeah, okay, I can. I can. I can talk and play at the same time. We're not sweating because he can't. If he tries to carry more than six, look. It's like that. So yeah, he's sweating. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll get us to the next. I'll get us to the fun zone, and then and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to show, to playing footage, so that I can talk properly about it. Uh, take these. Take, more, take a cheese knife. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, there's cheese knives. I'm going to put the cheese knife there. Okay, I'm happy with how that looks. Okay, this guy wants three cheese knives. Fuck. I don't know. Uh, I've noticed that when people play this game, they they, they do this a lot, uh, <laughs> like a sort of. Uh, uh, hey, Venn diagram, sort of. Three castles. Where are the volcanoes? There's only two volcanoes. Shit. There must be another volcano. Oh no, there there it is. There it is. You guys ready for this? Yeah, brace yourselves. It's a mountain. That's a thing from a gear stick in in where we live. Where I live, we have stick shifts, I think you call them. We do have those in America. Do you? Yeah. Actually, yeah, the car, the Uber we got the other night, the guy had a stick shift. I tried talking to him about it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make these a bit bigger. To make it more fun. Hide missing or show all? Show all, okay. Right, here we go. <laughs> yeah, feel it. Okay. Okay, back to work. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's weird. What happened there? All right, I'm going to play. Um, some gameplay. So just pretend I'm still playing it. Mm, hang on, full screen. This hasn't got any audio because uh, I, I did it recorded. I, I did it without recording the audio. But that's okay. I can play the music in the background. Shall I do that? Okay, right. Hang on. Uh, yeah, it's Bill. No, Wilmot. Okay, it's on here somewhere. Hang on. Uh, da, 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 da. Recently added. Oh, that is recently added. Oh, here we go. Music. Music. Uh, sorting. And then how do I loop it? Does anyone know how you make music? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Here? Oh yeah. Okay, right, back. Okay. That's just gonna play the same two minute loop for the rest of the talk. Is that okay? Okay. Maybe turn it down a bit, I don't know. Okay. Um So this is footage of me playing the game. Oh, hang on, it's not full screen. Oh, no, okay. This is footage of me playing the game when I'm like a lot. You can see there's a, I'm a lot further into the game, so I'm taking a whole lot of stuff from the. There's a dog themed section. I'm putting those putting those dog bowls back in the dog section there. Look. Yeah, I, I, I did jobs in warehouses when I was when I was young. Uh, I worked in a supermarket warehouse. 
when I was still at school, like at the weekends and in the evenings. And I uh, then when I was at college, I worked in the warehouse of a chemist. And uh, then I worked for a year in an archive as a sort of picture researcher. Uh, it was um, it was like a film stills library, film stills archive. And uh, I always enjoyed those jobs and thought they were quite. Um, yeah, I, I I kind of enjoyed the gaminess of those like those jobs in in, in the sense that the way I made them the way that I made those jobs interesting for myself was to try being good at those jobs. Like I don't know, trying to do I try and sort out the dog food delivery as quickly, you know, and I'd have like a, a mental you know, every I'd go to work thinking oh, I'm going to do dog food in under four minutes or some shit like that, and get really excited about that, and um, and just generally the sense of like knowing uh, knowing your way around this kind of interesting type of space because like like especially the film stills, it, we pretty much had stills of all movies, all you know ever in a, in an a, in an archive, and knowing your way around that and knowing developing a relationship with a load of stuff was quite interesting and and. Uh, I thought it might make <laughs> might make a good video game, <laughs> and for a long time. So Ricky, who I worked with making video games, for a long time he didn't seem particularly interested in this idea, <laughs> and I kept talking about it. And Ricky and uh, Nathan Gary, who we were working with on Ho Hokum at Sony Santa Monica, were very disparaging of Walmart's warehouse. To the p and Nathan decided it should all be everything in the warehouse should be clown accoutrements, and that the game should be called Clown Warehouse. And uh, fuck those people. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's yeah, it's just like yeah, it's a great way. Of, it's a great way of pissing on somebody else's idea and put, putting them in their place, but just like taking their best idea and, and turning it into a joke in front of them, and then just then it just becomes an in joke that every time we were hanging out. With, they'd want to talk about Clown Warehouse, but they didn't really. They didn't really want to talk about it. They just wanted to make me angry. <laughs> well, what's happening there? Why has that done that? Oh no, it's gone now. Yeah, cool. Yeah. But then one day, early this year, out of the blue, from nowhere, Ricky made a prototype of it, and fl and and made me so happy. And he just sent a little flash. I don't know, it's Swift or whatever prototype, and was like, oh, I did a prototype of Clown Warehouse, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> And uh, I, I feel, I'm so grateful to him for finally taking it seriously and then spending like the best part of six months working on it. Um, and he clearly doesn't really think... He, he, I don't think Ricky's really taken full ownership of this game and, and that's why he's not sat here talking about it with me. But um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, so we made it and we've not spent that long on it. We, we, we made it throughout sort of spring and summer this year, basically, we, we made this game. And as he... Should I be talking about what's happening in the game a bit? Do, do people understand what's going on in the game? Have you noticed there's a little robot guy? Yeah. yeah. Actually, she's actually a female character because she's named after Evil Can Evil Can Evil's wife. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I was watching a TV documentary about Evil Can Evil, and at the same time, I was trying to think of a good name for the robot in Wilmot's Warehouse, and then it turns out his wife's name was Borky, and and then it, in the documentary it. Evil Knievel is a horrible person, by the way. Did you know that? Really horrible. It, uh, it cut to like a picture of her high school face. What do they call those books of everyone's smiling when you go to high school? Graduation yearbook. And it, and, it, and just underneath it just said Borky. Underneath this kind of smiling teenage lady. And, uh, and, and I thought, yes, that's the name. That's the name for the robot. So that's, that's why this robot character is called Borky. Um, in this particular playthrough of Wilmot. I've got nautical, these are all the nautical flags, the, alf the ones that he's dealing with at the moment uh, are all the flags, letters of the alphabet in, um, you know, in, s I'm not sure it is so forth when you like do this. Yeah, no, flags just used for like hoisting them in, in a series to have to say a, a word or something. Um, and if you were super organized, you'd have them all from A to Z down the side, but they're not. Z. Z's a letter. It's actually the last letter of the alphabet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, bef so here's the thing. Like before, Ricky sent me the prototype. I'd been working on this game on my own, which is really hard when you're just the guy that does the art, and you can't 
code or whatever you call it. Um, and so, what? I didn't. I didn't hear what that guy said. Sorry. Sorry. I keep going. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. Okay. Um, here comes another delivery. What's he doing? Oh, anyway, who cares? Uh, <laughs> oh, no, he, like, this, he's deploying the robot. Like the robot scans things, and then yeah. Um, but yeah, serious point. I I designed a video game largely just through drawing stuff. And I think that's an interesting thing to talk about, like the idea that um, I didn't just make some art waiting for Ricky to start coding. Um, I actually was designing the game with the art, so I was drawing all this stuff. And while I was drawing it, I was kind of making, I was making design, design decisions, like I was tuning the hardness of the game just through the stuff that I was drawing and through, through making stuff look more or less similar to to, to, you know, and I was thinking, well, yeah, I can have some things where there's a category, like nautical flags is a category. How many letters in the alphabet are there? 20 something. 27. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that, you know, that's a kind of that's a kind of category of stuff that exists in the game that where there's 27 things. If you have like, if you were a sailor and you were playing this game, you'd go, oh, yeah, look, nautical flags. I'm going to I'm going to put all those together. Whereas there are other things that are more. Um, there are things that are more and less ambiguous than each other. There are things that are in no category at all. There are things that like, like this thing he's got at the moment is a cheese knife. He's chosen to put that with things of the same colour scheme, but he could also be putting, there's camels, camels. He could also have put that with, um, with the, as a che the other cheese things. So he could have put those with other cheese things. So I'm, I'm just sitting there drawing stuff in my sketchbook and thinking about is this too is this game too hard? Is this game too easy? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm, it's not it's not a game yet. Like it's just some drawings. But I'm making game design decisions while drawing. Is, is that interesting? I, I think it's interesting. Show of hands. Is is this interesting? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're I clear. You're I clear. I think it's interesting from the point of view as as someone who works in video games who who has no programming skills and never will have. Um. And I'm lucky that I work with someone who's really sympathetic to that and, and collaborates and has a f I have a full rich collaboration with Ricky and he, he doesn't treat me like a backseat driver in the way that I think a lot of people who make the visual art in a game sometimes feel like they're in the passenger seat a lot of the time. But even if I, w this, I kind of empowered myself by making, by making a game, making game mechanics just in the, the bit I can do in the drawing. Does that make sense? Is there, was there has is this the first time that you've tried to do it this way, or is there like a like a, a card game or a board game or something that has that kind of? I would uh, say that Hohokam was a bit like that in the sense that I would draw stuff and 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 we'd look at it and not know what it was or what it was going to be in the game, but I was always working collaboratively with Ricky. Whereas with this, I was waiting for Ricky to finish. He was making Loot Rascals with another artist, and I was waiting for that, and. Um, you know, I, I couldn't. I wanted to get on with it, but I had. I couldn't make anything other than just the art. So I kind of really drilled down into, into, and I kind of found myself daydreaming, daydreaming about playing it, and kind of trying to almost role play playing it, even though there's nothing to play other than just looking at a, looking at a sketchbook. You know. Anyway, I think that I've made that point enough. But um, so, if you watch this, you spend a lot of time in this game, kind of just pottering around, like moving things about and going, I'll put this thing over here, and I'll put this thing over here, and maybe do this, and you have a system, and you think, well, does, do these things need to go here, or do they need to go here? That's kind of all the game is, but I, I want to play a game that's like that, so, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not, yeah. There's a point, there's a bit in the game where you, this thing comes up here, look, here's, so here's our upgrade screen. There's only one upgrade he's not bought, which is the dungarees. Um, is the end of this business, isn't it? Um, can I make a weird request? Yeah. Can I stand next to you? My children are watching the stream and they're like going fucking bonkers. Why? Well, they they like Hohokam a lot. You shouldn't but be swearing. Me, you shouldn't be swearing in front of your children. They can hear me talking. I sh that's true. That's a that's a fair point. They so can hear me I don't have to swear either. Am I allowed to swear? Can you ask them? What? Are we? I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure it's okay. It's not. It's not gonna be the first time they've heard it. I want to go like this. I'm gonna go like yeah, this. Yeah, no, no, come, come, sit here. Come, sit here as long as you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I can't remember where I... Uh, Hi, bunnies. I can't. Sorry. Okay, well, what time lapse? Oh, yeah, this, so this is another film. This I didn't make this film. A guy, I think a Japanese guy. Uh, how do I make it full screen? A Japanese guy who's been playing it. Um, uh, there's a bit in the game, one of the kind of upgrades you get is a time lapse thing that you can see your progress throughout the whole game. And that this this is fascinating to me because it's somebody else's. So hang on, he's just, he's going to look at the fun zone. Does he do the fun zone? No, he's looking at that. Okay. Yeah, that's where. Okay, here we go. So this is a time lapse of his whole game. And I think this is probably about six hours gameplay. And you can see, it's for me it's really cool watching this because it's somebody else, like I'm the guy that made the game and I I have my sort of way of my system for playing this game. Um, and it's really interesting seeing somebody else's brain work, working on the same problem that I did. And and you, I can almost see his personality. I can see he likes straight lines a lot. And he's, he's interested in color more than I am, which is weird. Um, but you can also just see the rhythm of it. And when you're watching this, so there are bits in the game, every, every, the game has a really simple loop of like delivery customers, delivery customers. But then after, th after that happens three times, you get, a, you get a kind of extra long, you get 10 minutes if you want it. You don't have to, you can cut it short, but you get this extra long period where you can just, uh, you can just, maybe you've got some big ambitious idea that you're gonna move a whole load of things over to the other side of the warehouse because they make more sense over there than over there, or stuff like that. And that's, for me, that's the game. Like that bit of the game where there's no pressure, really, there's no time pressure. You're just kind of tuning your system and you're, you're just moving around the space is, yeah, for me, that's the game. That's what I wanna, that's what I wanna do. And the bit where you're stressing out trying to serve customers is okay. Like I've tried, tried we've tried our hardest to make that nice. But the bit that I'm in love with is the pottering and just going around going, oh yeah, this goes, this, this. and then sometimes you've just got a gap and in order to fill the gap, you have to go up and move everything sequentially to whatever. Yeah, It's kind of, sati yeah, maybe it's satisfying. Hopefully it's satisfying. How do you think this guy was doing? Yeah, it's pretty organized. He's more organized than me. I'm curious, the thing you're just saying reminds me of something that Lauren was talking about yesterday where he has his random colors, his random color palette, and sometimes it's a little bit weird and it doesn't look quite uh, like they would make it, but sudden, then other times it looks quite beautiful. Uh, and it, I was wondering last night if that was a thing where the color combinations that you don't like are one of the things that make the color combinations you do like better. And so maybe these like little periods of bringing boxes to people, and it's a little bit stressful, and you do a couple of those, and then you get back to your kind of happy sandbox space. Yeah. That, that makes, that accentuates or defines the sandbox space a little bit. Ricky, you've been replaced by Adam. <laughs> yeah, you could do, you want it. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think I only half understand that question, but um, like, 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 I mean, if it was just, sand, if, if all that happened is a, a truck came off and just dropped off 4,000 boxes, and all you did was move all those little boxes into place, yeah, who does, it, does it mean the same thing when yeah. you're not in no, you need, that's the thing. Yeah, you need, you need the kick up the arse of having a real reason for organizing all the stuff, unfortunately. Um, it's cool, though. Sometimes you watch people play it, and they just start organizing it anyway without even knowing what's coming. And they're like, oh yeah, I put these things together because they look similar. And then other people do the opposite. They play it quite far into the game without organizing stuff at all. And, and then they're like, why do I even need to organize stuff? It gets to the point where you just will not get any further unless you organize stuff. What's Ricky doing there? Oh, he's playing it again. Do you want to see mine? I can show you mine, mine for contrast, yeah. Uh, Jesus. Um, yeah, so here's a similar thing, but it's me rather than the other guy. It's interesting what you're talking about color because this game has a weird c color palette. It's got a really weird, sour, asymmetric color palette uh, which has no green in it. And, uh, and but even that is, so when I was going back to what I was saying about sort of tuning, tuning is the right, or like 
yeah, balancing gameplay with art. So I made this decision to have two yellows that are very close to each other in the in the colour scheme, which and there are certain things in the warehouse that are, look identical other than that that yellow, and which is there's not much stuff like that because that's that's not pleasant for anyone. It's like a bit of a cheap trick for me to pull on on a player, but there's a couple of things like that. Um, I like strange, yeah. I like strange kind of wonky color palettes, and like Ho Hokum's got no got no red in it at all. Um, I don't know if you noticed. It's got one bit. It's got one tiny bit of the game that's got a bit of red in it, but not really any red. Um, Ricky's got a microphone now. Hello. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna look at my notes. There. One, of the, one of the things about making this game was. Um, Dick spent, like, I don't know how many hours, but like, let's say, like, at least a hundred hours playing this game. More and than that. he was kind of like the player and the client. It was interesting. It was like a process of, like, you made the art and you spent a bunch of game sort of design time making the art. But also, you spent absolutely shitloads of time just playing it and then, and then coming back and just talking about it like you were a player of it. Yeah. And, and like, complaining about it like a player would. And then we talk about it like figuring out what to do about that. The thing that Ricky's talking about is like should be just a normal thing that anyone making video games does, but actually, in my experience, it's not. And I think that a lot of people who make games, either indies or huge, massive studios that employ hundreds of people, quite often I look at a game and I think, did anyone even ever play this bit? Other than just looking for a bug or something that's broken, like did they ever play this and just say, is this fun? Is this bit is this fun to do? And I was as guilty of that as anybody, I think, up until this game. I'm free, I'll freely admit that. Like, I'm really proud of Hohokam, and I think I got away with it. But the reality is that I did not playtest that game. Like, I playtested it, but I playtested it just looking to make sure that everything looked, looked right. You know, it, my, as, sort of my responsibility as, as the art guy. And I think that's actually really... Un I don't know. I, I think if that's what you're doing when you're making games, and I, I totally appreciate it, but if you're programming a, a game, you are going to have to constantly be running that game hundreds of times a day, jumping forwards, using debug to get to a particular bit and checking a thing. And I appreciate that, that after going through that, you've probably not got much energy for just sitting down and trying to play it as a normal person. But I think, and I used to just find, I used to find playing my own games incredibly cringeworthy, like almost like listening to a recording of my own voice or something like that. But with this game, I endeavoured to to kind of get over that, and so I kind of had a, an epiphany. I kind of pushed through that, and initially, initially, I was like, part of me was thinking, all I could see was what I didn't like about it, and it was kind of depressing playtesting my game. And also, I'm thinking, well, I'm the guy that made everything, so I know what everything is, and I probably I'm probably too good at this game in a weird, unnatural way that no normal person would be, so is this really worth doing? But I kind of pushed through it and I just kept playing and I kept playing and I got to a point where I almost had like my sort of touch, touching the void kind of <laughs> moment where, or like what's that film where the guy has to chop his hand off? I was like, hours. 127 hours. I, I, almost had, I almost kind of broke through into this kind of other place where I just didn't give a flying fuck anymore about this game or about whether it was good or bad or about whether I was the guy that made it. I was just like a guy playing some game about a warehouse. Why I don't know. <laughs> Forever and ever, for hours and hours and hours and and it was beautiful because you get to that point where you just don't care and and then you can start actually feeling it as if you're someone that didn't isn't the person that made it. And that's where I started having I think the most important insights about the game and I don't want to be critical of people. Everyone makes games in different ways, but I would strongly urge that if you don't play the shit out of your games properly, not 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 like debug, jumping around, but properly, start to finish, no cutting corners, the hard way, over and over again. Like you, you're 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 yeah, you're missing out on the most awful bit of awful but important <laughs> bit of, <laughs> of making video games. Um, yeah, it was it was good for me because I didn't have to do it any. I didn't have to. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't have to think at any at no point making this game did I have to think what do I want this game to be? 
because it was just like Dick was playing it all the time and then he would come and talk about what he wanted it to be and then we just concentrate on that and I didn't really have any like skin in that game particularly I was just like Dick's playing it all the time and he says this so he's right and we should just talk about that and I could just focus on like making it work and making it feel nice moment to moment and you know just like the, the you know the surface bit of the game without worrying about any of like the balancing or like how the systems fit together so this is just more gameplay um, I, I was just trying to read my my notes while Ricky was talking. How did you? Uh, I've got a question for you. How did you decide categories of things to draw? Um, I just drew stuff, uh, and I just drew a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I just drew things and and just kept going really and. Sometimes a thing would inspire other things. And sometimes it was more like a conscious thing. This category here I'm really unhappy with. Is it a category of like, actually, is it war? There's too much war stuff. Typical typical of a video game is like, there's a war category. It's weird, when I'm talking about categories, these categories are never exposed to the player, so they're only apparent, really, to me. I, um, it's, it's interesting looking at other people playing it. Sometimes people get the categories. Like Some are obvious, like, I don't know, sewing. There's a here. This one is there's a category of time things like watches and sundials and things. Uh, yeah, here's all sewing down here. Uh, footwear. This is time over here. Look, look, there was one watch with other time things, but then for some reason he's decided to go and put it with. What's he doing now? He's got socks. <laughs> he's taking the socks. I don't know why he's taking those socks he's, out. He's you. He's I know you. he's me. He's a, he's me. He's me in a, in the past. That's a different person. Um, that's what I told the police anyway <laughs> when they <laughs> when that bad thing happened <laughs> I mean, that was just me in the past that's not me now don't punish me now for you know <sighs> throwing the toaster in the is in that the a stealth, stealth bomber there? there's a stealth bomber yeah uh, I love stealth bombers actually they're beautiful um, so yeah, I don't know, like I drew some shoes and then I thought roller skates and then roller skates could go in the, there's wheels. So for me, having having internal categories in the game is a good way for me to like, get ideas for what to draw. But also, I spent a lot of time thinking about being inc inconsistent and having things that a lot of people are not sure what they are. That one's, that one's a really good example. That's actually a spur. That's why it's in with footwear. It's because it's a spur from the back of a cowboy boot. But most people, no, I'm not expecting any p real player to ever realise that. So that and that's fine. They'll probably put it with stars or something, you know. Uh, I was, when I was looking at my notes, I was I saw. Um, um, what did I see? So I want to talk about a big influence. A big influence. <laughs> a big influence on this game is the game Starseed Pilgrim, uh, and I guess. The reason why I want to mention that is because A, I think that game's amazing and I think will, will always be one of my favourite video games, and, but B, it really inspired me in the sense that it's it's a game that uses a really simple like Tetris-y block, block puzzle um, format, but you use within that very simple puzzly jumping on blocks format, you create this you create a place you know it's like a t it's a territory that you you grow to kind of know and explore and, and and you live in it and you know it and it's your you know it's your place that you know your way around and that that really captured my imagination just the combination of the simplicity but also what it, it, I, I got way more of a sense of place from that game than from other games that I don't know like Skyrim or some shit that, that, that has it's really atmospheric you know and I kind of wanted to make a game like that, and I think this game kind of sort of achieves that because I don't know. I feel I, I feel a real sense of ownership over this place, and like looking at this now, this is all a while ago that I did this, but I'm like, oh yeah, I remember I had those bees down there, um, <laughs> and I know it's like it doesn't sound like particularly evocative. It doesn't sound particularly like, but yeah, I don't know. It is, you know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it makes me happy looking at it again and thinking, oh yeah, I want to be back there. There's the wat watermelons. Should we take questions? Yeah, go on. Oh, uh, real quick, uh, yeah. my four-year-old says you're doing very well. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah that's good. Uh, we're gonna do old uh, James. 
Let me walk around and give him the thing. Thank you. Uh, so I think I, I notice you've got like the black and light out, white outline effect, and I think it's a line of sight thing. Is that right? Yeah, it's uh, it's line of sight and proximity. And uh, I, I notice you've got the outline going even if you're within a certain proximity, uh, even if it's out of line of sight. Was that just about difficulty balancing so you could still get an idea <laughs> of what sort of things were around a corner, even if you weren't there? Yeah. Okay. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, that, that is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and it looks cool as well. Um, I guess you know it, when you're, you kind of want to be. It feels claustrophobic if you if if you would just, just zoom in on the whole game, it feels too claustrophobic. I think it's important to have, it's important to have some kind of sense of like imagine you're in a w real warehouse. You can see all the way down the corridor, and you can see there's nothing in the way, but you can't see what's on those shelves. So it's kind of like a yeah, it gives you an analog for that. It gives I you suppose. a sense of the geography without the specifics. Yeah, I, I think like a lot of problem, like a lot of things in this game, the the solution to a problem or or or, or a kind of ha an idea of like how do we do this came from me just going what did we really do in a real warehouse like how is it in a real how does it work in a real warehouse how does it feel um i suppose Which, they, they, they always seem to be the, the, the things that worked best you know trying to get it as close as possible to to like a real thing so i, I don't have so much a question as more of a, a shared experience um so back when I was a kid, I used to be really into model making. And if I ever had like a bad day at school, I would dump all of the model pieces out onto the floor and just resort all of them into little boxes. And that was just like the most soothing thing to me. I do it with Legos as well. Does that, it, does that resonate with you in any way? Yeah, you okay now? Yeah, <laughs> I still do it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I'm okay. I don't, yeah, like a bit like what I said earlier on in the talk. I don't, I've never really been like that. I've never been one of those people that finds organizing things cathartic, particularly. But I totally feel a connection with you. Like I totally, <laughs> like I found playing this game cathartic. So I, I guess that's been like my introduction. To, I don't know. Like, have I ever found organizing things? No. If I, yeah, if I'm brutally honest, no, I, I, I haven't. But I know that lots of people do, and it's nice to have made a thing that maybe does tap into that for people and. And if it's therapeutic, like I feel really strongly about video games as being a therapeutic thing. And a lot of the responses that we had from people playing Hohokam was that they found it therapeutic. And and and, um, and I'm really proud of that. So maybe if this game is in a slightly different way, then that's a nice thing. Yeah. Why do you say Legos, not Lego? We have uh, no respect for brands and copyrights here. Okay, good. Uh, more questions? How many things? <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, jeez. <laughs> uh, oh, look, there's a boost. I hardly ever, I'll be honest. <laughs> 500, there are 500 things. Uh, even if you play, if you fill the warehouse, if you play right up to the, to the end, where you fill the warehouse up, you only see about half of them. So, and it's random what you get. So, yeah. Just like life. Just like life, yeah. Oh, more questions. Um, so, uh, this, this is a two-parter, but, uh, oh, okay. So, um, uh, Pretty exciting, so though. I, I know you, and I know that uh, some of these categories of things are things you encounter. Are you going to say that thing about like me ripping off the Imitone logo in one no, of these? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Never, absolutely not. But uh, like sewing equipment and uh, dog stuff, I know that both of those are things in your uh, that are around in your day to day life. So um, that's just kind yeah. of kind of interesting to me. Uh, yeah, I like dogs, and I'm married to a professional embroiderer, and she was playing it a bit, so I put sewing stuff in it. Yeah, um, and I, yeah, I like sewing stuff as well. It's nice. There's some nice things. Some of my favourite things are the sewing in the sewing book. Yeah. I think it's okay to put your personal things in a game. Absolutely. Isn't it? Yeah. I think it's interesting. 
Hang on. Oh, wait, I'm going to stop on some on the way. You hang on to that, Randy. I, uh, how is the manifest organized? Uh, initially, w when we first did it, it was organized by category. And we thought, oh, that might be good because it will like subtly hint at the categories. But it's just it was just way too obvious after sort of in the mid game what was going on. And so then we just completely randomized it. Um, it stopped it stopped people from thinking of their own cat categories, which is yeah. And then we had this thing like uh, we we introduced the ability to drag the tiles around in the manifest. Then we found that people would like think that that was an important thing that they should be doing and spend way too long doing that. So now we've sort of lamely introduced a bit of text that just says, you can do this if you want to. <laughs> it's, it's not important. <laughs> but if it, because it kind of helps, like it's kind of a sketch pad, isn't it? Like you can, later on you, you actually get to access the manifest whenever you want when you buy it as an upgrade. And then it's like, I guess it's sort of useful to be able to go, what have I actually got in this warehouse and just see it all on one screen and you can like get the numbers involved and stuff and drag it around, but yeah. What are the rules for the robot's behavior? Uh, so you pick him up, you drop him, he scans uh, all her. the... Her. Sorry, her. He scans all the blocks in the radius, uh, which is like, I don't know, it's like a six tile radius or something like that. And then it knows how long each block has been in the warehouse, and it knows whether a block is in a group with its, with its you know, pals with the same the same blocks and so it can go hey has this block ever been picked up by the player and is there uh, an associated group somewhere in the warehouse that's been there for like longer than like a month or whatever like hasn't just arrived and then can I get there can I get to both of those places so it basically just assigns all those tasks and then just like a stars itself around picking stuff up and dropping it there's um I, I paused it here because it's a good example of how the robot is also rubbish you can see here it's um, it's actually pi it's blocked the corridor yep. by piling those hash signs up. Yep. Um, so the robot the robot helps you a lot and and takes a lot of the, takes a lot of the pain out of dealing with deliveries because once there's over once there's over a certain number of stuff of, of different things in the warehouse, dealing with delivery starts to become a little bit of a the, like the bit in the game that you dread because it's just hard to get your head around it all. And the robot effectively makes it feel nice again. But the robot also isn't perfect and quite often puts... So with the robot, you, you it, saves, it saves you a lot of work, but you also have to kind of go around, go, go around kind of tidying up after it, which is a nice thing, I think. I like, I like doing that. Yeah, we, ad we added the robot because we were like a month out and we were like, oh, the, f the first half an hour to an hour of this game is kind of interesting, uh, certainly when you started playing it. And like towards the end when the warehouse fills up, it gets really interesting. But in the middle, there's this period where you just got to do the thing. And so like the robot just felt like the most, the best use of our time as a thing to add, which would mitigate that, like in an interesting way, rather than just like, you know, you can carry more stuff now or whatever. Uh, hi. Uh, what? Who's that little guy in the middle? <laughs> that little man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the player character. Oh, okay. <laughs> that that my friend is your avatar. <laughs> <laughs> we did have for a long time not have a player character. It was more like a cursor. Um, I think it's nice to have a play. I think it's nice to be a little a little guy in a game. Um, yeah, you you were an, you were kind of analog. You were an analog thing that could move around anywhere. And then when you picked blocks up, they would be physical and they would collision detect with the stuff. But you could just whiz through stuff, and that meant that you would just get away with being able to just dump stuff anywhere you wanted and just fly through it, just you know, float over the top of it. And as soon as we changed that, it it made a big difference. I think in a, in a good way. Like it it sort of forced you to think about layout a lot more. It, it it's you. It, it it's it, it. Oh, what happened there? Tea break. Oh, tea break. Yeah. All video games are about the body, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm curious about the music in the game. I imagine in like a sort of repetitive game where you're kind of doing the same thing over and over, the music should stay out of the way, but also be kind of like 
complimenting what you're doing. Can you talk about your choice for it? Not very well because uh, we didn't make it. Uh, we worked with Ellie Rainsbury, who's like a London-based musician. Um, she made uh, there's like tracks for all of the different um, phases of the game, and we, you know, they all just kick, kicked off at the start. There's like I think eight or nine tracks, and then it just crossfades them based on what's going on. Um, the you- robot has amazing music. The robot is the best audio thing. Shall I see if I can get that up? Yeah, if you've got, you've got a save, haven't you? I've got a really, like, messed up save that has the robot in here, so yeah. I can do that. You need to kill the, uh, kill the iTunes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you just keep a shotgun? Okay. There we go. Um, it's back in this. So I think this save here, is a, it's a mess, but... but there he is. Can you hear him? So this is what happens when you don't organise the stuff is when the deliveries come in. Obviously you get <laughs> yeah, so can you turn the music up a bit, please? So he's like singing along to the music. And it's, it's proximity. The music's quite repetitive and quite video gamey, but in a way that I, I like. I don't know, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I think it needed video gamey music because it's one of those games that is a kind of, you know, it's a game with a load of blocks and you're a little blocky man. Uh, <laughs> games like that should have video gamey music, I think. <laughs> Generally. It's a simple rule, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's happened to this. I got quite far in this, but then I must have, for some reason, I was playing it without doing anything. Cause I, I, I've let it pile up quite, this is quite a big backlog of stuff he's dealing with. Here's the cheese, set, look, here's cheese. Cheese, look, there's, a, there's a fondue. Bloody war again, go away war. There's a wheelchair. A guy on YouTube, oh no. Oh, yeah, I've lost a life. A guy on YouTube Was fought, he CJ? Uh, oh yeah, CJ. He's your boss, he's a pentagon. CJ is based on um, CJ from the Reginald Perrin books or TV. Does anyone know? Series? The, yeah, it's a British, British uh, by by a guy called David Nobbs who unfortunately died last year, and it's a British um, book a series of books and and sitcoms. But yeah, he's basically the guy's boss in that, and then we just nicked him and turned him into a Pentagon. <laughs> I'm just escape. Oh, I got another question up here. Hang on. I was going to say was that there, somebody thought somebody on YouTube thought that this, which is clearly the end of a, what do, who, what do people think that is? A what? Yeah, audio jack. Yeah, this guy thought it was a dildo. <laughs> There's more camels. More camels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I have a question. I, I saw earlier. I saw one uh, image that looked extremely suspiciously like an iPhone. Or like a like a smartphone. Yeah, like there is a smartphone. Yeah. In it, yeah. How is there a smartphone in 1990? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> hashtag <laughs> hashtag lazy devs. I don't know. He that whole it's thing. It's a with Newton. It being, it's a Newton. That whole thing with it being set Nobody in the 1990s is totally ricky, old. and I don't know why it is. Although it is the time. It is set at the time that I was working in the wa- in a warehouse. Yeah, it's partly that, and it's partly that like. It's very, it's very manual game mostly. Like until we added the robot, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty like you're just literally manually taking stuff out the back of a truck and carrying it to shelves. So oh I know it's not got the poster. There's um. No, no I'm not showing. It's fine. No, don't show them that. Yeah, uh, is that it? Have we had all the questions? Uh, we might be at it. Oh yeah, I think I think this. I think we have to wrap this one up. Thank Fantastic. you guys so much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Do I, can I pl- can I plug the game? It's out in January. I think it's well. It's in this month's humble monthly, yeah, and it's sometime early next year. It'll be available. 
you guys have uh, uh, people can follow you on social medias or a uh, uh, websites or uh, no no <laughs> oh, should I okay what am I opening what notebook notepad hopefully okay what am I writing How many is it? K O M. <laughs> com. <laughs> like that? Is that it? I don't know. I can't see. Where are you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Is that from Goldeneye? Okay. And then Ellie is. Ellie is now Ellie Rainsbury. Pretty much. As, as you expect. I think that's spelled right. No, 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 it's not that. Delete the last three letters, it's E, it's Berry, E, R. <laughs> yeah. With one R? Yeah. Okay. yeah. No. Ellie, Rainsbury. And I'm, I'm on Twitter, but I'm not on Twitter. No, 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 sorry, not with one R at the end. Two R's at the end, like Berry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> don't follow me. Don't, don't put it <laughs> I'm not, that's why I'm not putting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.